The Ascent is a top-down indie ARPG that effectively functions as a twin-stick shooter set in a cyberpunk setting. This is a game that we most definitely need to talk about, but before we do, check this out. Hey everyone, it's Roy McCoy and my friends, this is a game that I absolutely enjoyed. In a nutshell, I'd kind of describe this as Diablo with guns and a cyberpunk setting, so if that sounds awesome to you, this is most definitely something you should check out. For me, the reason I thoroughly enjoyed this game is because it absolutely nails it in the areas of gameplay and graphics, and if it doesn't look too great on this video, you can thank YouTube's compression algorithm for that, but I can say, quite honestly, firsthand, this game is gorgeous. However, it does have one or two flaws that we're going to discuss in this video. And before we continue, please do remember to smash that like button as it really does help this video to grow and it helps me out considerably. Now, let's talk about The Ascent. So, as most of you know, I am very much in love with indie games. I want to say a huge thanks to the developer for providing me with the code to do this review. Now, I know of late that the term cyberpunk has become a pretty dirty word, but bear with me because the developers Neon Giant have managed to pull it off. And when I say pull it off, they have exceeded every single one of my expectations, capturing the world perfectly. It feels so inspired by things like Judge Dredd, Blade Runner and Altered Carbon. One of my favourite series, please Netflix, do uncancel that series. It was awesome. And with a team of just 12 people, they have managed to capture the world perfectly and deliver on the premise in a way that other larger development companies haven't managed to do of late. Not obviously not thinking of any specific examples there. In fact, the look and gameplay are the reasons that I fell so strongly in love with this game and enjoyed it so much. And before we continue to talk about the actual game and the experience, I need to say that this is a Microsoft exclusive and is available on Game Pass which means that it's included with your subscription. I specify that because I am sick of the amount of people that say free on Game Pass. It's not free if you have to pay for the subscription. It's included. These are the same sort of people that tell you they won something on eBay. They didn't win it, they paid for it. Just think about those wonderful people that pay thousands upon thousands of dollars for absolutely nothing in a box. Oh yeah, winners. Anyway, rant over. So it's included and it's free, not free, on Game Pass. So if you're already subscribed to that, what are you waiting for? So at its core, The Ascent is a high-octane twin-stick shooter and effectively is shot from a top-down perspective and reminds me of something like Diablo. But where this game excels is absolutely in its gameplay. The shooting is just so much fun. And the best thing about it, you can just be walking through the world and then out of nowhere, out of nothing, just an absolute carnage begins. Enemies start getting dropped in by cars, climbing up the sides of railings, popping out of doors and just opening up fire. Civilians running and fleeing, but you don't care, it's just collateral damage, pumping round after round into anything that moves. It literally springs up from nowhere. And the fact that they got this element so right is what makes this game a definite winner for me. Ducking behind cover, shooting over the top of it, hitting cars, the cars are exploding, grenades going off, and the AI is really decent. You cannot just sit there behind your cover, they will swarm you. And as quickly as all that carnage begins and the collateral damage, it ends and the firefight is over. But you're never too far away from more carnage. And it doesn't have to be just during a mission. These just happen spontaneously wherever you may be. And I have to say the animations and graphics that I'll get into later look absolutely sensational. And again, if it doesn't look that great on here, thank that YouTube compression algorithm for that. Now, I did mention at the start there were one or two flaws to this game. And while I mentioned that the AI is decent enough, there does seem to be some tethering because occasionally, if you run too far away, they will return back to their original spot. And at other times, they will just stand there, straight in front of you, taking round after round until they drop. The only other negative things to mention about this element of the game is that sometimes enemies will just pop up out of nowhere. They just spring up as if they're teleported in Star Trek style. And while those three things I just mentioned are a little bit negative, I have to say it does do too much that damages the experience, and probably hopefully soon they'll get fixed in a patch. And there are a great range of enemies to go through. Your typical cyberpunk, some aliens, lots of droids, and a great range of boss fights that are absolutely sensationally epic. 
The only thing to mention that is particularly annoying is that occasionally you do seem to get caught and snagged on things that you can't really see from the perspective, which does at times end up with you dying, which is pretty darn annoying. And what makes these spontaneous eruptions of violence even better is the audio. Some kind of cyberpunk style tune just starts kicking in and the guns and the explosions just sound magnificent. I mean, just listen to this. When talking about the mechanics of firing, there are two firing modes. First of all, you get a direct firing path, and if you hold down the right mouse button, you can fire a little bit up, which at the start you end up shooting up stairwells, which isn't that effective, but later on you realize you can duck behind cover and fire wildly over the top of it, which is something that also the AI does as well. But like I say, you can't stay in that cover for too long, but this is a really nice addition to the gameplay. And gameplay aside, what really sets this world off is that it is a pleasure to see. Neon Giant have managed to capture the cyberpunk theme perfectly. There is such a level of depth to the world behind you. The lights and the neon skyline, it's absolutely jaw-dropping at times. And it always feels like there's something going off. If it's not people going about their jobs, it's literally spontaneous eruptions of violence in the background as well. Explosions or things happening, taxis flying past, there is always something to look at and to see and you never feel like you can take in the whole thing. And if that's not enough, at times that top-down perspective flips into a more straight-on viewpoint so you can take in the beauty of the world. Which I get is just the developer showing me going like, yeah, look, we made a beautiful game. And I'm like, yeah, I know, I get it. I've seen it from top. Oh, wow. But it is absolutely breathtaking. And if you get bored of playing this game on your own, there is also co-op. And I can't think of that many games that, especially with the cyberpunk setting, that you can play a co-op twin-stick shooter, especially with this depth of mechanics and gameplay. So definitely, if you enjoy playing games like this with your friends, this is something to look at. But as I mentioned in the introduction, it is an ARPG, and the RPG elements shine through with skill points. Now, there's no complex Valhalla-style skill tree. This is quite simply putting it into areas like health, targeting and weapon skill. And the RPG mechanics don't stop there, your character is fully customizable from the start. And I decided to put him in a kitten t-shirt, because why wouldn't you? But that level of customization is straight out of the old school RPG playbook. On top of that, you can upgrade your weapons, grenades, and get some augments, including things like spider swarms, incredibly strong punches, and a drone that picks up stuff that's littered around the map. The main campaign will take you around 15 hours to complete, but there are plenty of side missions and they are most definitely worth doing. Taking into account trying to see all the side missions will probably take you around 25 hours. There's also bounties and a variety of different shops and people to visit. There are so many things to see and do, and it's basically an endless source of content for YouTubers. Moving on from that, the story itself is not bad. It's definitely inspired by people like Isaac Asimov and Philip K. Dick, but it's nothing to write home about. However, it does keep the game moving. So it's not bad, it's just not amazing. I'm not gonna spoil the story, but basically you take control of an ident, which is effectively a slave who is owned by a corporation and the largest corporation has just gone bankrupt. And it's effectively up to you to stop your region falling into pure chaos. You meet a wide variety of interesting characters, both human and alien, and I have to say that there are some awesome CGI cutscenes and the script writing and voice acting is second to none. There is a huge amount of lore to explore and you could spend hours in the in-game encyclopedia. If I had to compare it to any other games in terms of feel, I'd probably say it's a bit like Necromunda from the 40k universe, especially at the start, as it kind of has that hives feel and in terms of a game, Warhammer 40k Inquisitor, however it's much much faster. One of my bugbears about that game is that it was so slow paced. In terms of anything else wrong with the game, I have to say my last complaint is that the UI in terms of the menu is a little bit clunky. It's nothing bad, but it seems like the developer was so obsessed with making a cyberpunk theme that some of the user experience was sacrificed in terms of style. Now, the minimap on the main game screen is a bit tricky to navigate. You seem to get lost at times and you get spun around, but that is nothing that prepares you for the main map that's in the menus. And I can get it, it's meant to look all cyberpunk, but effectively it's really difficult to understand. But on the whole, I have to say this game has it where it counts. Amazing gameplay, sensational graphics, and incredible audio. The script writing and voice acting is also something of a high point to mention. But like I said, it does have a few flaws. But it was nothing game breaking. If, if you can put up with some AI members spawning in randomly and occasional glitches in the AI, then I seriously suggest if you wanna play a game that's incredible fun, 
check this out. It is a great basis for a franchise and I'm looking forward to it more and more after it gets its few patches and I'm hoping that along the line we'll get some DLC expansions or even a sequel because seriously these guys, this 12 people team that managed to pull off a decent cyberpunk RPG are going places. So if you enjoy a top-down twin-stick shooter Diablo style cyberpunk game with guns and you like your indie games, check it out. But from me today, all that leaves me to do is say thank you very much for watching, let me know any other indie games you'd like me to cover, and this is Roy McCoy, out.